Welcome to the airplane design tutorial about ailerons. In the last video I gave you some information on how to size the elevator and rudder. In this one we will go back to the wing and add the ailerons. The ailerons are needed for roll control and in order to provide that function they need to be able to create a rolling moment, which is a moment around the airplane x-axis. A moment is a force times an arm, so we have two ways to maximize the rolling moment. By mounting the ailerons all the way outboard on the wings, we have the longest arm we can get. The arm and therefore the roll rate will be higher in example wing 1, because the aileron is further outboard. The span of the aileron also has an effect on the roll rate. The larger the span of the aileron is, the higher is the roll rate. While we are looking at the sketch, I want to introduce a few definitions. The aileron span is obvious, also the wing stations 1 and 2, where the aileron starts and ends. The aileron cord here is the distance from the hinge line to the trailing edge. The relative aileron cord is the ratio of the aileron cord to the wing cord at a particular wing station. The relative aileron cord can be constant over the span, or vary, as in this example, because the wing is tapered while the aileron has a constant cord. The forces that cause the airplane to roll are the result of the aileron deflections in opposite directions on opposite sides of the center line. For example, to initiate a right turn, the stick is moved to the right so that the right aileron moves up, decreasing the lift on that wing while the left aileron moves down, increasing the lift of the left wing. How much force an aileron develops depends on several aspects. First of all, and most important, is its deflection. The larger the deflection from neutral is, the larger is the force the aileron generates, but only up to a point, and that point is characterized by when the airflow starts to separate. Even if the wing is not stalled, the airflow aft of the aileron hinge will stall if the deflection becomes too large and the aileron becomes a spoiler. We need to avoid stalled airflow because of the increase in drag and loss of effectiveness. So what is too large? It is safe to say that to at least plus minus 10 degrees of deflection the airflow stays attached. For the most part, an aileron deflection of 20 to 25 degrees minus in this case means up still works. Using a smaller down than up deflection is called differential deflection. The added benefit is that the drag that is produced mostly from the aileron which is deflected down is reduced. This drag in turn produces a yawing moment that is opposite of where we want to go and is therefore called adverse yaw. It must be compensated by applying rudder in the direction of the turn. How much down deflection the airflow can handle also depends on the wing angle of attack. In slow flight near stall, even a small aileron down deflection can initiate airflow separation. So it is best to use a smaller down than up deflection. About plus 15 degrees down are sufficient. Larger aileron deflections can be used if the aileron shape is a slotted design. Here the airflow can stay attached and help maintain roll control even if the wing in front of it has stalled. The aileron force is also a function of the aileron area and its relative cord. I have already presented this chart as part of the tail control surface tutorial, so here it is again. The larger the relative cord is, the more lift can produce the aileron. But the same drawbacks apply here as well as for the other control surfaces. The increase in weight from extra mass balance, the increasing stick forces and structural considerations will limit the relative cord. If the airplane has flaps, they will compete with the ailerons for span. Usually the aileron loses out and gets less span than the flaps. This is partly compensated for by increasing the aileron relative cord. This chart shows the results of a roll rate analysis of a small example airplane with 32.1 foot wingspan and 122 square feet of wing area. It has a rectangular wing and a constant cord of 3.8 feet. The aileron is also of constant cord. 
to see how the roll rate is affected by the aileron span, I changed its span by lengthening it at the inboard end. The outboard end stayed at the same wing spation close to the tip. You can see that the roll rate, which I have plotted here for two different speeds, increases nicely with aileron span. Obviously, the part of the aileron that is further inboard has less effect than its area at the outboard end, so the roll rate increases not linear. Gliders without flaps make use of long ailerons to get the necessary roll control. Even higher roll rates are achieved on gliders with flaps, where the functions are combined into flaperons. Flaperons are full-span ailerons that also move up and down as flaps. Flaperons are even used on some small airplanes, as shown here on this Kid Fox. Of course, the roll rate is also a function of speed. The higher the airspeed is, the higher is the roll rate, as we have seen in the previous chart. Airplanes that require good aileron control for maneuvering at slow speed therefore need larger and more effective ailerons. The roll rate can be calculated fairly accurately in the early design stage because it is mainly a factor of what we discussed so far, the arm times the force and the aileron deflections. But one has to understand another factor here, which limits the roll rate, which is the roll damping. You may have noticed that airplanes with really short wings have high roll rate, at least compared with an airplane with longer wings, even if they have the same size ailerons. Roll damping can be visualized as a big soft pillow on which the wings lie. Once the airplane starts to roll, the wings have to squish that big soft pillow. The faster you try to roll, the more the pillow resists the motion. The roll damping is higher the larger the wing cord is and the longer the wingspan is. So what minimum roll rate does an airplane need? The critical flight condition for roll rate for most airplanes is in slow flight on approach to landing. Wind gusts can roll the airplane rapidly and the pilot has to be able to return the wings to level quickly. A roll rate of 30 degrees per second is considered good, although the regulations for certified airplanes even allow only half of that. Of course, that roll rate on an aerobatic airplane would be considered extremely sluggish. Another thing to consider when designing ailerons is the stick force it takes to move the ailerons. Some stick force is obviously beneficial to give the airplane a nice feel, but if they are too high, the pilots will complain or may even be unable to achieve the roll rates that the airplane is actually capable of. The stick force is the result of the way the aerodynamic hinge moment of the ailerons is mechanically converted by the control system. By selecting the actuating arm length and the control sting stick length appropriately, the stick force can be adjusted within limits. When that is not enough, the designer needs to look at the airfoil shape and how the ailerons are hinged. In this sketch, the little arrows show the air pressure forces acting on the airfoil surface. The tip of the arrows show the direction of the force vectors. You can see that on this shape there is more load on the lower surface than on the upper surface, which is called rear loading. Any movement of the aileron has to come out to overcome those forces. An, an airfoil that has a concave lower surface like this one has a higher hinge moment than an aileron that just has a flat lower surface. An aileron that only has area aft of the hinge will have a higher hinge moment than an aileron that also has some area in front of the hinge. We can make use of that and move the hinge aft until the stick force is low enough or add a de dedicated surface in front of the hinge, which is called an aerodynamic balance horn. This form of hinge moment reduction is most often used on aerobatic airplanes, where this feature also improves the roll rate. Now we have all the ingredients for the aileron design, so let's wrap up this video. In the next one, I will talk about the other half of what is usually found sharing space on the wing trailing edges, the flaps.